All right. Jamal Charlo calls out Demetrius Andre and DeZone. Says Demetrius Andre is chinny and let's and for those guys to call him and try to make this fight. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. Also, I wanna say thank you to everybody in the two most important communities of this channel, the live stream community who come support the channel, chop it up about boxing every Monday through Friday at 11, right around 11, 15 a.m. Central Standard Time and the week ending show, OG Boxing Talk, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. and also the Patreon community. We got more stuff coming up over there. Thank you guys for your consistent and steady support for the channel. Jamal Charlo, the 160 pound WBC champion, who unfortunately has question marks about whether or not he is the true champion of the WBC because the WBC gave a franchise belt to uh, Canelo Alvarez, which muddies up the championship, uh, the championship picture at 168. But nevertheless, he's the WBC, he's the holder of the WBC 160 pound title. Now, he says that he wants to fight and is willing to go to the zone to fight Demetrius Andre. And I think that that fight absolutely, lootly, lootly needs to happen and is a great thing. For boxing. And it's interesting that this fight could be, I hope this fight could be made because there's an interesting uh backstory to Jamal to Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andre. And the back the backstory is this: these guys were both down there at 154 pounds at the same time, and Demetrius Andre was set to fight Jamal Charlo's brother, Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo is, is the former WBC 154 pound champion who lost his title to Tony Harrison. Uh, Tony Harrison and he were supposed to rematch, but Tony Harrison got uh, injured his foot or ankle, something happened. And now that fight is postponed. Hopefully it'll happen soon. But before Jamel Charlo and Jamal Charlo were champions at 154 pounds, Demetrius Andre was a champion at, 150, at 154 pounds. Jamel Charlo was set to fight uh, to fight Demetrius Andre, but Demetrius Andre pulled out of the fight. The reason Demetrius Andre pulled out of the fight was because J uh, Rock Nation, who was at the time was a new promotional company or sports management company. I'm not sure what what it is exactly. I'm sure it covers a bunch of sports, but a sports management co um, company is probably the best way to describe it. They entered into the market, the boxing market, and made an offer to Demetrius Andre to sign with them. And they did that in the middle of, of, of the fight being set up between he and Jamal Charlo. There was an HBO contract that was offered to Demetrius Andre. Demetrius Andre backed out of the fight with Jamal Charlo. And because he was offered the, he was asked to do that by a representative of of Rock Nation and pulled out of the fight because Rock Nation guy had promised him over dinner, not officially, that they would pay him a sum of money equal to what he would get to fight Jermel Charlo. So Jermel Charlo lost his first opportunity to fight for a 154 pound title because Demetrius Andre flaked out. Demetrius Andre thereafter was sued by his promoter. Rock Nation and Demetrius Andre were sued by his promoter. And then Rock Nation backed off and acted like they didn't know that they didn't have anything to do with it. Demetrius Andre is then stuck out in the wind. He looks bad to Showtime. He looks bad to Jamel Charlo. And after that, Jamel Charlo's guys weren't interested in him. But now at 160 pounds, Demetrius Andre has found a home on a network, that being the zone. He's found a chance. He's got a championship belt again, the 160 pound, the 160 pound belt. And Jamal Charlo has a 160 pound belt. And they, they're in a situation where these two guys, I think, need one another. And the reason that they need one another is because of the two prima donnas in the 160 pound division. Two prima donnas. 
Prima Donna number one, uh, Gennady Golovkin, and Prima Donna number two, Canelo Alvarez. If the ranking, and I ranked the number one and number two Prima Donnas for the length of Prima Donna-ness going on in the 160-pound division. Uh, there could have been unification at 160 pounds, an undisputed champion at 160 pounds a while ago. If Gennady Golovkin, when he held the IBF, the WBC, and the WBA belts, would have fought Billy Joe Saunders. But he didn't, he decided not to do that. He decided to fight prima donna number two, Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez have hit, and he have two fights. There was one in between for Gennady Golovkin. So Gennady Golovkin actually fought three fights. He fought a guy named Maurice Sel- uh, uh, Magic Sel- I think it's Magic Sele- Selecki. But he fights Selecki, goes right back, loses all three of the belts to Canelo Alvarez. This is Gennady Golovkin I'm speaking of. Gennady Golovkin loses all three belts to Canelo Alvarez. And then what does Canelo Alvarez do after that? He has only one more fight. To get undisputed unified champion at 160, what does he do? He does exactly what prima donna number one does and fights somebody else, not the WBO champion. At that time, the WBO champion is Demetrius Andre. And to this day, it is to this day, it is Demetrius Andre. But then Canelo Alvarez doubles down on his, on his fuck out of here-ness. And Refuses to fight Canelo out. Refuses to fight Jamal Charlo. Moves up to go up. Uh, decide who did he fight last? He fights Daniel Jacobs to get the IBF to get the IBF title, and then he moves up to uh, he moves up oh, he to defend the WBO ch- title. Then he moves up and he fights somebody at 160. He moves up and and now he's going to fight Sergey Kovalev at 175 pounds. Never focusing on those two guys at 160 pounds that he could that he could unify with. So now uh, Jamal Charlo is saying, "Yeah, I'll fight Demetrius Andre, and I'll be willing to go to the zone to do it." Now there shouldn't be anything holding up Jamal Charlo from going to the zone to do it because Jamal Charlo has his own promotional company and he has an exclusive managerial or advisory contract with Al Heyman. But and he's not signed to a network deal, so he should be able to do that. And I think that that would answer a lot of critics of Errol Spence. <laughs> I think that now ain't that crazy. I'm saying I think that will answer a lot of the problems that of critics of Errol Spence because Errol Spence, uh, people who are critics of Errol Spence and supporters of Terrence Crawford, constantly bring up every time I say, "Hey, who has?" Who has Terrence Crawford fought? Terrence Crawford needs to fight Sean Porter or he needs to fight Ugas or do something else. Every time a man drink more water or wool bag or some other, you know, super, super uh, Terrence Crawford fan comes up and says, well, what about Jamal? What about Jamal Charlo? As in, why doesn't Jamal, Jamal Charlo go over to the zone? All the other 160 pound fighters are over there in the zone. So shouldn't he go to the zone? And I'm like, hey, man, I don't want to talk about that. I'm talking about Terrence Crawford. But now I'll talk about it because Jamal Charlo is saying he's more than willing to go over there to the zone to do it. Now, interesting thing would be, though, whether or not, whether or not Eddie Hearn will allow that fight to be made. Now, i would never seen or heard that that Demetrius Andre was chinny. Jamal Charlo is saying that he's chinny. I think he said chinny is F. I've never seen that he's chinny. I've got to look back to see whether he's chinny or not. Um, but there, maybe that's a reason why I don't even think Demetrius Andre will take this Jamal Charlo fight, though. I Number one, because of Eddie Hearn, and maybe there is something to him being chinny. But whatever the case is, Demetrius Andre, if he wants to really get a shot at those prima donnas, he's going to have to fight Jamal Charlo. And if Jamal Charlo wants to get a shot at those prima donnas, he needs Demetrius Andre because those two guys very well might be the best two guys at 160. They might be. And because we don't know because Canelo won't fight him. Canelo dang near just said, at least the way that I interpret it, said he thinks he's good, he might lose to Demetrius Andre because he called Demetrius Andre boring. How the, how the hell is the fight going to be boring, dude, if you can't just step to the cat, find him, and make a fight of it? 
He's telling you that there's something he can't do with Demetrius Andre. Personally, I've never seen Demetrius Andre in a boring fight. I think that he's a highly skilled, highly skilled fighter and exciting fighting fighter. But I don't. But Jamal Charlo's not boring. He just upped and dropped. He just upped and dropped the belt on Jamal Charlo. But anyway, I think that what Jamal Charlo is talking about with Demetrius Andre is absolutely positively what we need to see. It more than likely is the only way that we're going to get either one of these prima donnas into a situation where they need to fight one of these guys. And if they don't, they get stripped because Canelo will get stripped of that IBF. If uh, actually he already got stripped of the IBF and Gennady Golovkin won it. But Gennady Golovkin will get stripped of that IBF if he doesn't fight a man, if he's not fighting a mandatory or uh, maybe I don't know if the IBF would actually order that. But anyway, let's just hope that this thing can lead towards a unification fight or an undisputed fight at 160 by unifying at least two of the belts in either Demetrius Andre's hands or Jamal Charles' hands. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.